We are back with another prompt. It is prompt number 155. I wanna put another ant on the back. Let's do it. I'm never gonna get over how embarrassingly horribly drawn this worm is. Never. All right. I'm excited to see what we have next. Our prompts are la landing on the moon, okay, and rotary telephone. I mean, pretty random, but definitely doable. Here we go. This is one of those prompts where I'll admit I got stuck on one idea and I couldn't seem to use my imagination to imagine any other possibility on how to combine these prompts. So it's what I ended up going with. So as you can see, we have our typical Casey styled spaceship, the spaceship I draw for any illustration that is in space. If there's a space illustration, it is guaranteed 99.9% .9 that I have drawn a spaceship that looks exactly like this. Some sort of round cylinder body, one circle window and two little wings just coming off the bottom of it. I always imagine there's a third one, otherwise how would the spaceship land? There needs to be three legs, like a tripod for it to land. So just pretend the third one's in the back and you just don't see it. So we've got our spaceship obviously landing on the moon. I was just really obsessed with having fun with the clouds. I love drawing clouds and fire, round and bubbly and fun. So I knew I wanted to incorporate that somehow. Obviously it is a moon landing. So there will be the action of landing with smoke. Now rotary phone was where the trouble came. My immediate idea, as you can see, the very first thing I drew was a spaceship landing on the moon and just having random, at first it was going to be different types of phones. The rotary phone, a flip cell phone, our modernized flat cell phone. And that's where I got the idea of, well, what if we started sending trash to the moon and so someone's landing on the moon on basically a landfill and there's just trash floating in space on the moon everywhere and it's just a really sad scene. This is not a fun illustration. I did try to make the rotary phone the spaceship so maybe there's a sort of style spaceship that the actual phone itself is a spaceship and then connected to the line the actual phone is sort of like a secondary I guess place you can go into or it's a satellite or something. I haven't figured out the function and I never will because it's not the idea I went with. I couldn't get this basic moon landing with trash out of my mind, so that is what I went with. I was excited to work on it, I was happy with the idea. What I wasn't happy about was the amount of detail that was going to go into this piece. You guys know I love simple art, my style is simple, I like to keep things simple, flat is fun. I'm not completely against adding detail, it just intimidates me. Here's the thing, trash? Trash could literally be anything. People throw everything away. People throw new things away. Some things don't even make it to a store and they're just thrown away straight from a factory. Literally any object, name any object, it's gonna be in the trash. But me, I sit down to draw and I can't, I can't name a single item. What's an object? I don't know, what's a thing? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so I sat there and I did come up with a good amount of objects and fun things to draw. Even threw in a character of mine as a cameo. So I was penciling this over on Twitch. I was live streaming the penciling of this piece when this happened. Oh shit! Oh! Oh! <laughs> my cat Cheese got in my lap and she wanted to cuddle, so I reached over to grab my jacket across the desk when I hit my cup of water that I use for water coloring. Thankfully, it was the clean cup of water, not the dirty cup of water. And thankfully, I wasn't painting yet because if I was painting, that water would have reactivated all of the paint and completely destroyed my progress. I wasn't too worried about it. Watercolor paper is meant to be wet. It is meant to handle moisture. However, graphite or pencil is not supposed to get wet because it does set it into the paper a little bit more than you would want it to. And sure enough, when it came to time to erase the penciling and ink the piece. It was pretty much impossible to get the pencil off the paper, which I wasn't super worried about. I was going to be painting on top of it, so you probably wouldn't see it anyway. It might just be a little bit muddy and dull and messy, but what can you do? I'm not gonna worry about it. I think if this happened to me four years ago, I would have been much more panicked
panicked and stressed about how less perfect this piece would be. But the more traditional art I do and the more I just try to go with the flow, the less stressful stuff like this is. And yeah, what are you gonna do? Art is art, nothing's perfect, you move on. Much like how we are moving on to the inking of this piece. <laughs> Weirdly, I was looking forward to inking this piece. I think I usually sort of stress out when it comes to inking a piece because I've been doing a lot less traditional art, especially watercolor art. I've been doing a lot of gouache lately and I don't use line work. So I think my line work has been suffering and I think I've mentioned this actually quite a lot, especially in the prompts. So I do get a little bit nervous when it comes to inking these days because I just, I'm not in practice anymore. And because this piece was so large, in fact, I am working 11 by 14 instead of my usual eight by 10. I just felt like with this amount of detail, it just felt right to draw bigger. And I've also been looking at some of my past artwork thinking I really do work small. And I do talk about this a lot too, or at least I have in the past. Heck, you guys even know the whole reason why I even created the Teeny Weenie Challenge is because I noticed how small I always draw. So I thought, let's see how small I can go. But no, today we went bigger. And it definitely made drawing all of these details and painting the details a lot easier because everything was a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. But most of all, I was looking forward to painting this piece because I love painting space. It's something I haven't done a lot lately because as a result of not painting with watercolor, I guess I just haven't. But I did recently paint space with a video and it reminded me of how much I love painting space. So here we are once again, painting space. I will say it's actually very stressful when there's a bunch of small objects like this. The way I paint space, I like to keep things wet. I like to keep it moist, if you will. And when there's all these small objects you have to paint around, it really slows you down and areas start to dry. You start to paint panic, you're rushing. But this space in particular, I think turned out pretty good. Oh, I completely skipped over the smoke. I was most looking forward to painting the smoke because you guys know I love painting transparent things. However, I knew the smoke was going to end up looking like the way I draw liquid because, well, smoke and liquid transparency is so different and I was not prepared for gradients. So I just went with it. My smoke kind of looks a little liquidy, but I was really happy with the flames coming out or rather the smoke that was illuminated by the flames deep inside the spaceship. It all just looked really nice. And I was looking forward to painting the rest of this piece. So I painted space and then it was time to paint all these random little objects. And this gave me flashbacks from like ant art pieces. I love working on my ant art pieces. I love painting the ants, choosing the color theme, painting the ground, shading them. And then it comes to painting all of these absolutely tiny little details, constantly changing the color you're using, washing your brush over and over. That sort of thing I do not look forward to when it comes to super detailed paintings like this. Paintings and illustrations that just have a lot going on, I find them to be a bit of a pain in the butt. Are the results worth it? Yeah, probably. Speaking of color, I was actually thinking after I'd already inked the piece, so it was too late. If I had thought about this before, I would have definitely arranged the objects to be more rainbow ordery. So say we start on the left side where the pizza box is. We focus on objects that are red. And as we move across the page, down to the bottom and up on the right side, I work my way through the rainbow. So say we have red, an apple, chewing gum, maybe a red bicycle, then we move on to orange. We've got an orange, yellow, a banana, tennis ball. Then we move on to green, maybe some plants. Oh, and by the way, trust me, I'm well aware that by the time all of this trash gets to space, especially because space is made up of different elements and stuff, you know, the lack of oxygen. The plants would not be green. The objects would be crushed to heck. There's no way a whole pizza box with an intact piece of pizza would be floating in space. Or I don't know, maybe it would, but this is also all fake, so yeah, no. Moving on, green paint, blue could be blue things. You get the idea. So that would have been a really cool color rainbowy gradient across the objects. But like I said, I didn't think about that until it was too late. So we ended up with just a mess of objects. Speaking of too late and thinking of things, oh boy, did you notice that I added the rotary telephone when I was painting the piece? Even when I was streaming the penciling of this piece, I thought to myself, oh my God, I have to remember to add the phone. I kept forgetting to add the phone and I would 
would get distracted. Someone would suggest another object, so I'd add that object. I completely forgot to add the rotary phone, the entire piece of this illustration. And that's not the first time I have forgotten to add the prompt to the prompt. It happens when it's not the main focus of the illustration. But you know what? We got it in there. It, it, it got snuck in. If you can find it, congratulations, you found the phone. Anyway, enough rambling. That is it for prompt 155. There it is. No. Last week's prompt was claws, beekeeper, watermelon, and coins. And here are you guys' entries for those prompts. We've got everything from watermelon monsters, claws made out of bees, and adorable bears selling things. Good luck with this week's prompt and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.